election riggings where the, the, the only people allowed to vote were landowners who happened to be the people who supported, you know, the United States taking over. And uh, they even yeah. take us out a tour of the palace here where they even imprisoned the uh, Empress of Hawaii. No, no, go on, please. Do you call people that are occupied by imperialist country colonized people? Yeah, I think I think what I'm trying to say is I think the fundamental paradigm of this society is uh, imperial and colonial, and and so yes, inside the United States there are colonized people. If you look at the court system, the political system, it's a, they're, they're systems of colonialism and of colonial domination and of incorporation. If you go to the, the courts, it's not it's not just about racism. It is about the idea that certain people are conquered and su subject and other people are, are and so, you know, uh, even when they bring, as they say, black faces in high places or brown faces in high places, when you have somebody like Viragosa, you have somebody like Obama, those are essentially neo-colonial figures about pacification of colonized people and you know white people patting themselves on the back and say, oh, I'm post-racial. Yeah, I just want to say that uh, certainly before and to a greater degree after 9-11, uh, the whole Palestinian issue has become uh, um, difficult for some, for some of us because uh, if you if you really want to champion, uh, as I think any decent person should, the, the, the rights of the Palestinians, you're uh, almost automatically labeled as being an anti-Semite uh, because surely you, you you I mean you you, you want you know if, if Palestine it becomes a, a full-fledged state it's going to it's going to uh, undermine the the uh, survivability of Israel uh, and of course Israel is a Jewish state so you must be anti-Jewish etc etc so what I want to do is it possible to frame a a, a position such that you want to preserve Israel assuming you do and some people don't. Uh, you, you certainly don't want to hurt Jews, uh, and I, I certainly don't. But you want the Palestinians who were at for all the, the, the people who were there originally uh, to have this uh, this boot taken off of their neck. How how would you formulate that? Uh, well, I'll say you know like people talk about a one state solution or two state solution. Personally, I'm in favor of a no state solution as I am an anarchist. Okay. You know, Jews lived quite well and comfortably in Muslim societies for you know half a millennium from the founding of Islam until the uh, you know, Zionist imperial project of, of European colonization was launched, modeled not on a national racial struggle, but actually on the colonial struggle. They, they cut a deal with the British Empire to say, give us some territory. We're willing to take, uh, I think, uh, uh, one of the African countries, and they changed their mindset, no, give us Palestine. Uh, you know, the, so, speak up. So, I'm, I'm saying, I, I believe in a no-state solution. I think that uh, Jews live peacefully in the Muslim societies, you know, as other people have involved. Personally, I, I, I'm of Jewish uh, descent, and I, I was raised Orthodox, and you know, I went to yeshiva. I, people I, I knew are now settlers in, in Israel. I've seen them waving their Uzis and stuff like that. You know, to me, that, that, that that's uh, uh, unacceptable. I think that uh, people without the state intervention, without uh, imperial intervention, would be able to live together much more peacefully than they do. So, uh, to me, again, I think it's a no solution. I think the same is true for all these other societies. I think that absent, you know, British imperialism, then the Scots and the Irish, you know, have a different relationship than they do when the, uh, you know, empire has gone in, and the same thing with the Basques and the Catalonians, etc., etc., etc. So, I, I think that the decolonization is about ending those kinds of state regimes in favor of somebody else that's uh, into communalism, to use the term that black writers use.
project to vaccinate children that are at the school, but they don't have, like, they don't realize what the white person with the savior complex coming in to save the poor black people actually has on the community itself. And the community then, like, maybe, yeah, the, edu like, the educated kids and the kids that can afford or can have the resources to get to schools are getting vaccinated, but then what about the children who aren't at the school? And so then you have a different, now you have a cl a more class disparity and also educational disparity, and now they're also the dirty ones. The health disparity. Yeah, the health disparity. And so it's, and I think that even in the Occupy movement, you run the risk <coughs> of this kind of safe, savior complex, somebody told me that's what it's called, savior complex of like, I have privilege and I, maybe I have, maybe it's from white guilt or whatever, but I think I should go and do good in the world instead of, this is all fucked up, this is all shit, we all need to fix it together because we're all part of this global community. And so that's, that's all I have to say. Um, if, if I could uh, say just a couple things real quick. Uh, one thing, I really like what you just said, okay? And, and one of the things I would like to, Put out there is what, what Michael said about Marx is is very true. I'm a Marxist. I don't see Marx as a god. Marx made some mistakes, okay? Um, and I'm not sure, but what if Marx had still been alive during the Russian Revolution? If Marx would have been in favor of that rev revolution, in as much as Russia was not a capitalist state, it was still a state of peasants working on land right. and Marx was talking about you had to go ahead and develop a capitalist state before you could go ahead and have a socialist revolution okay and and there was some things around that but what I would like to say is what Michael was saying about uh, Marx being European central uh, uh, from a European uh, uh, viewpoint there, there have been books written on that and there are there are there's a huge amount of debate within the Marxist community around that whole thing um, and I find that debate very good. But where, where I'm going with this is, is if we're going to bring down the capitalist state, I would really like to see the Marxist and the socialist and the anarchist and everybody that's anti-capitalist working together. N not, not that you let, and, 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 and by the way, I see dangers in every one of these groups if they get off to extremes. If, if the Marxist and the socialist have any conception at all that what happened in Russia was Marxism or socialism, yes, those people need to be guarded against, okay? That was totalitarianism, that was state capitalism, that was that had nothing to do with what Marx wrote about. But if they're talking about communal societies where the power is in the hands of the masses, and the masses are not at the bottom, the masses are at the top. The coordinators, you can think of them as managers or whatever, but these coordinators are at the bottom and they are servants of these other people. Then that kind of a society is very empowering and, and liberating. But I really would like to see Marxist, socialist, anarchist, people that are at, it's going to be a huge job to bring down capitalism and colonialism. And I think we need to all to all uh, uh, work together on that. Just uh, on two, on two uh, issues. One, I will agree with you on your last point because without such a a united front, so to say, it will be impossible. I mean, we can see it from the life of Occupy movement and all other movements, or the fact that most of the left groups have had 15 members for 10 years and it has, the same, it has remained the same number of people. And this is not a criticism because they are my friends, I'm part of it, but it is not going to work. But on the other question that Mike raised, yes, uh, I don't know why there should be a debate about it, then when you look at Marxism, and uh, Karl Marx. Uh, I mean, some it's, it, 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 an idea that I've studied extensively. There's a lot of European perspective in it, like the fact that the, he supported the colonization of India. That is true. <laughs> it is not a matter of debate. Karl Marx supported the colonization of India, um, and so he he was thinking very very much from a, a European perspective. And when you also examine the fact that nothing, he did not examine anything in terms of the essence and the quintessence of some indigenous culture. Some of them that had very extensive system of communalism. I did not say communism, of communalism. None of those elements went in, but very, very prominently was the stand he took on this of colonization of, uh, uh, of India. Because he said, the engine 
for the dismantling of traditional society will not be possible. Feudalism will not be possible. And they, they, they will not achieve the goal of, industri of industrialization if India was not colonized by the British. Um, some people would say that uh, here was a white guy writing such a thesis. And so, Kalmas, and you cannot deny that in all of us, there's an element of where we come from. I am standing here in Los Angeles, but I must be honest that oftentimes when I think, I go back psychologically to the small village where I grew up. There's always a little of who we are, of our values, of our culture, in every of our actions. And so you cannot say that Karl Marx <laughs> could have been a kind of different being who was not in any way impacted or affected by the fact that he was a European. That will not be, that will not be the truth. And you and I come from the same uh, uh, ideological uh, position. So if it is something we want to debate, you can take it to the village square. But, no, no, no. But I am saying for the purpose of horizontalism, it's not a debate between us. We should let others speak. Um, so let me finish my point. <laughs> yes, yes. So we, that is something about Kamas and it's a debate, like I said, we can take to the village square and talk about it extensively. But lastly, it is important when you look at the life of Occupy, I agree with Mike, Michael that a lot of uh, our white comrades have showed that uh, they have looked and moved beyond that bridge of race. And it is now known and accepted by a majority of us that we will have to build a human collective, uh, which is going to look beyond the question of race, beyond uh, all other areas which the 1% used to divide us in order to create the kind of world that we are looking ahead to be. The, the reason he did yeah, that was economic. It's not let people, I know. It's economics, economics. There's not, always cultural that. issue in economics consideration. But his reason came from economics. <laughs> First of all, I don't know where you got the idea that yeah, Mark uh, was for the uh, invasion of India. It's written. No, who wrote it? Karl Marx, maybe. No, he, he wrote the letter. No way he would write that. <laughs> he supported they don't the know. Of this is what he said. Talk to them, not to me alone. Talk to well, them. Well, I'm answering you. Yeah, but talk to This everybody. is what he said. Talk to the everybody. discovery of gold and silver in America, extirpation, enslavement, improvement of the indigenous people in the mines, the looting of and pillaging of the East Indies, India and the carving of Africa into the war for the commercial hunting of the black skin signaled the rosy dawn of the capitalist age. Now I want to answer this guy when he said that we need all these different groups with different tendencies and different thinking if as long as we're against the capitalist system where we should unite against the system. Yes, but what happened if you, the revolution is won and you take power and you don't, you haven't addressed the differences, there will become a power struggle within the very tendency and you will fight among yourself and the counter revolution will come in and swallow you. So that's why we try to achieve consensus here so that we're not creating yeah. power over others, but it's horizontal. Um, I, I wanted to chime in a couple of things. Uh, I don't want to get worried about Marx himself, but I think that if you look at the history of left uh, radical oppositions, it has not been adequate to the past. For example, the Communist Party and the Socialist Party of France maintained the position that Algeria was an indivisible part of France and were prepared to support the war. If you look at the Socialist Parties in uh, Europe by World War I, every one of them lined up with their own bourgeoisie to support the imperial war. If you look at the Communist Party USA, when Franklin Delano Roosevelt declared uh, the, the some policy or other, and they said, okay, Puerto Rico is no longer a colony, now it's a commonwealth, and, uh, you know, uh, the, the CPUSA uh, 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 attempted to dissolve the Communist Party of Puerto Rico and say, now, now you're all members of the Communist Party of the United States. So every single Puerto Rican in the Communist Party in Puerto Rico and the United States. Too much for your brain. <laughs> yeah. You've been in like one sit and I, I've after been in a couple. Like one of them, the first one bored me. Like the horizontal one, I'm like, oh, I'm so bored. 
And yeah, they have four viewers, so they must be bored too. I wonder what they're talking about over there. They're all smiling and nodding and... I'm getting kind of hungry. Yeah, there's really I think I'm going to take a break and go to the bathroom. Yeah. Yeah, there's I'm going to do that. Down there for the event. Yeah, Which and I think there's the City Hall East is open. Well, that was the thing. I couldn't really tell because they didn't... Like, just as I was opening the door uh -huh. to go in there and try to use the bathroom, uh -huh. there was a, an officer and then some woman, and uh -huh. he was like... There's porta potties over there pointing to outside uh -huh. down the street. Yeah. Because I said I like he was started yelling at me and I was like, Oh, can I use the bathroom here? But he didn't actually say no you can't use the bathroom uh -huh. here. He just said there's porta potties outside. Yeah. So Well I, I think I was gonna go in there like I own the yeah. place and just go. Yeah. That's usually what I do when I go to places I'm not supposed to be. Yeah. But that is I think a public restroom. Yeah, I thought that was, as long as the main doors were open, that should be available to the public. Yeah. Yeah. So All right, I'm going to go. I'm All going. Right. Is there still water? Oh, I think I see some. I don't, I don't see cups over here, though. Let me see. Let me look down here. All right, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and stop streaming for a little while. Hi, Mama Sunshine. I'm going to stop streaming for a while. I'm going to go uh, find a restroom and take a, a quick break. So keep your browser open. I'll be back later. It, it will probably be more fun tonight at 7 when there's music.